Hello, this is Peter, a.k.a. Fathom, P-H-A-T-H-O-M on Twitter, and I'm going to be doing a review today, a nice little uh, video review of the Samsung Galaxy Note 8.0. This is not the normal Wi-Fi one, this is actually one that my wife got me as a present while I was in Thailand last month. This one is actually the Galaxy Note 8.0 International Model. As you can see here, it shows 1280 by 800, 1 1.6 quad-core processor, 2 gigs of RAM, HSPA+, an S Pen, full HD playback and recording, 5 megapixel front and 1.3 megapixel, or actually 5 megapixel back camera and 1.3 front-facing camera, GPS, 4600 milliampere hours battery, and smart remote feature. And you can see all the different logos over here. It is a GT5100 3G model. This I got from Thailand. It was about 600 bucks before VAT. Had a nice Samsung logo, which I just tore off previously. And also came with a coupon, 500 baht off. At the time it was 27 baht per dollar. So it's 500 baht off a case. Problem is nobody nobody had the cases over there while I was in Thailand. So I'm going to be doing a unboxing so you know exactly what comes inside. You get the Galaxy Note 8.0 with a nice little protective sheet on it. Which I'll be taking off. And then next, or actually, the back side comes with some cool little protective uh, labels. Shows the model number, serial number, also shows where the items are located with a uh, transparent sticker, SIM, micro SD, and S Pen. S Pen's right here. It supports up to 64 gigabyte micro SD card. Then we go inside. We've got the uh, Samsung Galaxy Note Easy Guide. It's all in Thai since I got it from Thailand. Also comes with a nice little quick start guide. It's partially in English. Mostly really in Thai. Here's the toll free customer support number. Also comes with the charger adapter. The charger adapter right here has a nice Samsung logo, USB port on the side. It's similar to a Galaxy S3 charger, but it's white. For some reason, the Galaxy S3 white only had a black charger and cable. This comes with white ones. It's about a 1 amp charger. And it uh, comes with a protective little uh, sticker plastic on it. I'd recommend keeping it on if you want to protect it from scratches. It doesn't uh, impair the charging whatsoever. And it, this charger doesn't really get that hot, so it doesn't really melt. Also, the next thing is the USB cable. USB is a micro USB 2.0. Let me get that focused a little bit better. Oh, it's a distance. Micro USB 2.0. So it'll work with all your previous Samsung Galaxy S3 uh, or 4 cables. Also comes with the Samsung headset. Let me put that out. This is uh, similar, or actually exactly, to a uh, Samsung Galaxy S3 headset. Has the uh, buttons for volume and answering and hanging up phone calls. It also has the microphone. This also comes with the interchangeable headset pieces. I have them somewhere, but I, I just kept the original size. They're a lot more comfortable for my ears, but they have different sizes. Also, you can throw, uh, if you have Skull Candy ones, they're compatible. Alright, so here you have the Samsung Galaxy Note 8.0. As you can see, the design looks similar to a very large Galaxy S3. Some people would say that's a bad thing. I, on the other hand, like it. 
The nice thing too is the power button is right here on the right side and the volume controls right there. You got the infrared for the remote control. You have a microphone over here. You got the headset jack right on top. You've got the uh, earpiece for the phone feature. You've got the front camera. And you also have the speakers. It's stereo speakers. And another microphone on the front. So that way you got two for noise canceling. You got the USB port. And then you have the back. You have the nice, well, decent 5 megapixel camera. Uh, little tip if you think the picture doesn't look too good on the screen, connect it to the computer. It actually looks better than on the uh, preview in the applications. It actually looks clearer. Most likely having to do with the uh, DPI on the screen itself. Since the screen is 1280 by 800, that's the best that you can get. Yeah, right now I'm doing this review on a iPod Touch. So, let me get out of the way so it doesn't have my reflection. It doesn't take too long to boot up at all. Alright, right now I'm on the default UI. Uh, I typically, when I get an Android device, I change it to uh, most likely Nova Launcher. As you can see, I got a calendar. I've got a cool, nice little animated background. It hasn't really impaired the speed of the device at all. And if I go over here to settings, I can scroll down. I got wireless N. Uh, right now I'm just connected. Right now on T Mobile, which is my carrier. I'm on 3G. I also get HSPA Plus. I do not, as you can see, it's HSPA Plus now. I do not get 4G. I'm using the refarmed uh, 1900 megahertz spectrum. As you can see, I go on about device. It shows it's Android 4.1.2 and it is a GT5100 model. It shows the kernel and the build. This device is really nice. I like the screen. It's pretty vibrant. I think it's a super uh, LCD. It is not a. Uh, it is not an a AMOLED. So, if you're an AMOLED fan, you're going to be disappointed. But other than that, it's it's pretty clear. The response time is very nice. Let me just go to the shows my. Uh, the temperature in Celsius. By default when you get this device, depending on what country you get it from, you could set the default language when you first power it on. I set it to English. It had about Thai, it had a few other languages, and as you can see it has the uh, notes application here. I'm just going to do create note, tap on the note that I want, and there's a note. All right. So I have the S Pen. This is the S Pen right here. If you know it from the days of uh, Galaxy Note 2 and Note 1 and the Galaxy Tab 10.0, it's pretty useful. So I could put in my name. I'm a sloppy drawer and I'm not going to draw it that good now. So you got the option to either erase or even backstep and do undo. You can change, this is the S Note app, you can change different modes on here. You can even make it so you've got the words right here. I could just write it and it will show up as text. So if I haven't tried cursive, oh, it did it, P-E-T-R. Let's try Peter. So as you can see, it works pretty de pretty decently, actually pretty well, because I'm a sloppy, uh, <laughs> since using computers for so long, your writing skills tend to diminish a lot. So it does a pretty good job for uh, cursive writing on here. So it's a pretty nice application within itself. Let's go back to home. I recommend if you're going to use Android, use... Uh, 
Chrome. That's my little calendar. The camera feature, that's one thing I was slightly disappointed with because the camera itself is a uh, 5 megapixel camera. When you press and hold it, it'll focus, but as soon as you let go, if you want to tamp really quick, it's got to refocus again and refocus again. But other than that, it takes pretty good pictures for my 5 megapixel. The other downside is going to be no flash. And there's one more downside. They say, oh, it takes 1080p video. It says that on the front. So I select in the camera here. I could check the different uh, settings. Let me just, uh, you could set a timer. You could set different options here. If I go into tools and scroll down to video recording, I go to resolution here. I only get 720p. That was really disappointing. I thought possibly since this had similar specs to a Galaxy S3 uh, international one that they would have 1080p video recording but it's mainly most likely a restriction because of 5 megapixel camera so this also has Bluetooth screen rotation as soon as I turn that on that's going to flip over and I could do it hold it either way if you're going to use this as a phone, you got the phone feature right here. I'm not going to put any numbers, but it's an example of phone numbers on there. I could type in a number and it would dial it out. And it works exactly like a phone. You got the speaker right here. The audio quality is very good. Um, also, you can use a Bluetooth headset or the headset that comes with it. I'm an example right now mainly of uh, movies. The movie quality on the screen is very nice. And let me just skip around so there won't be any issues. But the picture quality is really crystal clear. Everything is fast, so works pretty good. I would recommend it. If you want to use this for video playback, it is freaking awesome. As soon as I try to put a show on for my son, he snatches it away from me <laughs> and uh, enjoys watching it. Video games are zippy, apps are zippy. They run very well. <coughs> And uh, let me show you multi-window mode next. Let's say you want to have something visible. You want two applications to run at the same time. Like, I'm checking my email or, or I'm surfing the web and I want to be able to use a can use something else. Let me just go to basic internet. I'm just going to use a crappy browser. But uh, let me just go to yahoo.com. If I press and hold the back button, or you could enable it by default, you can scroll to another application. Just go to phone. You can actually press and hold it and drag it to the other side. So if I go back here, well, they don't mention this much, but if you just press and hold it and drag it, you could pick which side you want it on, and you could have two applications open at once. So remember, you can rotate it, and it'll work that way, too. It'll flip it up and down, or if you rotate it this way, it's left and right. So that way, you could surf the web while checking your uh, calendar or checking your email. Not all applications are compatible, but I heard they're making them more at developers, or I think it's Samsung that's working on it. So I can add it and throw it over there, and I can look at YouTube. See, so yeah, all in all, this is a nice device. If you want to have like a uh, a large tablet and you don't make that many calls, just like I do, this is a great device. I love using the S Note application to be able to take down notes and draw other things because I'm so damn forgetful that I want to keep a memory of something. I would draw it on something else on pad pe of paper and then I'd lose it and then there goes all my uh, notes. So this is a good little handy 8-inch tablet phone. Um, I don't agree to the term phablet because that's too fabulous for me but uh, phone tablet, tablet phone would sound more appealing and only down, another downside too is on the Galaxy Note 2 you have a feature that you could set up in the S Pen options let me go over here settings this one doesn't have it there's just some basic S Pen settings I heard if you root it you can add some extra options you can add a detached sound and re 
uh, detach and reattach sound. But the one thing is on the Galaxy Note 2, there was an option that an alarm would sound if your stylus was far away. They probably didn't do it because they didn't think people would use this for a phone much. But since it's the international version, I would I, I would think they would put it in. But uh, they didn't. Maybe in an, uh, another update. Nice thing is, since this is the international model, you're not restricted to a carrier on updates. It's just Sam straight up Samsung. So right now it's on Android 4.1.2, which works. Also, uh, the other feature right here. Let me go by. It's under display. Display, you could do reading mode. I keep reading mode on, it makes it a lot easier for the eyes, and I increase the font size. The font size, I have it to large. If you go to normal, it makes it smaller, but my vision's really not that good, so I have it set to large, and it makes it a lot useful to, a lot more useful for me to work with. Uh, there's Smart Stay. This has got a nickname called Stalker Vision that your phone's staring at you. This is the uh, feature that's in the Galaxy uh, uh, S4. They introduced it on this device right before the S4 came out. Smart Stay makes it so if you're staring at the screen, it's going to use that little camera over there to make sure you're looking at it. And if not, it'll start going to sleep mode. And actually, this one's a stereo speaker set. There's two speakers on the side right over there, one on the top, one on the bottom. And the thing is, if you have a Galaxy S3, you can get some good sound by mainly putting something back of it and causing an echo. Here you could do the same thing if you put something on the side over there. Right. So I got a song list open. If I got a song, I'll just play this one. The volume's pretty good on this. If I put something here, of course it's gonna echo because it's gonna reverb and cause a lot of volume, so that's a different. See, so yeah, audio quality is pretty good. Audio playback on there is good too. So it's a pretty nice device overall. So let me just do a uh, final verdict on this thing. So, if you're a person who wants to have a nice big phone, this is the thing for you. If, you want, if you're content with the Galaxy Note, I wouldn't really recommend this, but for me, my vision's not the best. This is a really handy device. The good part, let me say what's good and what's bad. The good is it's got a quad-core Enyos uh, 1.6 gigahertz processor and 2 gigabytes of memory, which keeps the machine very fast. The S Pen is great for writing notes and drawing, too. If you're an artist, this is a really cool device to draw with. Uh, the phone works very well on AT&T, and it works on T-Mobile's uh, refarmed 1900MHz uh, band. It's got a freaking huge screen. Sure, you don't have a high DPI like 1080p or anything like that, but it's 1280 by 800 Still looks pretty nice and works great for movies and uh, browsing the web. Uh, it's got better uh, PPI actually uh, than the iPad mini so and a higher resolution. You look badass when you whip this out of your pocket to make a call, really, I know. The battery life works very well. Uh, I haven't really had much of a problem with it. Uh, the multi-window mode is handy at certain times. The reading, smo uh, the reading mode and the smart stay, aka stalker vision, is useful when reading for prolonged amounts of time. Your eyes don't feel as bad. Uh, now with the bad parts. The camera takes okay pictures since it's about 5 megapixel. The shutter takes a while to focus and take pictures. No flash for camera. Like, why not? They could have added it in. Video recording is only 720p, even though it states 1080p on the back of the box. Let me just show you again. See? Full HD 1080p playback and HD recording. People consider nowadays when it's HD they mean 1080p, especially on a, a device like this. An infrared remote 
app is just okay. That's really why I didn't show it because the uh, application is a little flaky. They have to do more work on it. When I was trying to choose just basic TV, it kept on asking me for a cable provider and I did not want that. You get 16 gigabytes of storage, which is pretty nice. Uh, the one downside is you only have 8 to 9 gigabyte free, just like the Galaxy S4. It eats a ton of storage, all these little applications and things that they shove on here. But, you know, you've got the micro SD slot. I, how can you complain? You could shove a 64 gig chip in this sucker, like I did, and you're good to go. You got the TouchWiz bloatware uh, on here. I recommend I use Nova Launcher. This is just the basic uh, TouchWiz stuff. I like TouchWiz on and off, but typically I just uh, use the one that's separate, the Nova Launcher. Nova Launcher works good. Let me just go to the internet. One thing I like is the default keyboard on this device is really nice. Unlike the other uh, devices, it gives you a, fu a full five row keyboard and you can either enable um, swipe but I don't really care about swipe so I just stick it to the default keyboard but it's great you can hold it with both hands and literally do thumb typing or one hand and just tap away and this one allows you to do different languages so I I installed Thai on there so my wife can use it and there's a few more languages there might be more language packs but I'm not sure but that's really cool. Since it's the international version from Thailand, it has a Thai language. So, final verdict, if you have a Note 2 and you're content with that, it's probably not worth getting, but if you want a large device and your eyesight's not the best, or if you want something bigger than the Note 2, this is really good. You won't get 4G LTE, but I heard that they're going to be releasing an LTE model in the near future, internationally, and that might be what's for you. So if you, if even if you're on T-Mobile, if you get the Refarm Spectrum and it's available in your area, this is a very nice device. I haven't really had much of a problem with it. There was only one spot in uh, the Chicagoland area that I was on roaming, but other than that, I had a clear connection all the way. The 3G signal was strong. Uh, if you have AT&T, it's all the better for you because then you can use this uh, without a problem. The other nice thing is too that with this device, since it's factory unlocked, you don't have to worry about uh, tethering. You can actually enable tethering on this device, and all depending on uh, what carrier provider, you don't have to worry about a stupid logo screen popping up, preventing you, like if you buy a T-Mobile one, they give you all those restrictions. It all depends on the plan that you are, of course. But yeah, that's my review of the Samsung Galaxy Note 8.0 International model. I hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to comment on my uh, video below.